Now, HP just sent over what I think might be the best convertible 13-inch laptop here for 2022. It not only brings a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 12th gen Intel processor, of course, it's a U series, which is gonna be good for battery life. It also has a 2.8K OLED display. Now, I'm not talking about the Spectre line, people. I'm talking about the HP NVX 360 13-inch all new here for 2022. That's right, they now move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, offer this with that OLED display, 12th gen processor, and we're seeing really good battery life even with the OLED display. This is not something we normally see. Let's see why I think this might just be the ultra portable convertible for 2022. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP NVX 360 13 inch convertible laptop all new for 2022, coming up. You know the drill, folks. So before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. The NVX 360 13-inch starts at $899. It is customizable over at HP's website. Best Buy offers a really good SKU that gives you excellent battery life. That's $1049.99. And my review unit, which is fully maxed out, comes in at $1299.99 over at HP's website. For those interested, I'll leave links in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, the only available color right now is the natural silver. We've seen that before, but HP sent over this one. This is space blue, and it's a really nice color, and it will be a customizable color for you to choose later on. It's just not available yet. And for those wondering, what's the difference between the 2021 model and this year's model? Well, this chart will show you some of those differences. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We're gonna get to that in just a moment, but let's find out what else you get. You get some product information along with some warranty information as well. Now you get a 65 watt USB-C power adapter. It's a braided cable and you get the power cord. They also sent over the HP tilt pen that gives you extra pen tips and it charges via USB-C. We're gonna test it out later on as well. Now handling this unit for the first time, I love the blue color on this. This is thin, light, and it's all metal design is rock solid. Nice job in terms of the looks and the build. Okay, folks, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, a micro SD card reader. Next to that is a drop jaw USB-A port. Moving over to the right side, you get a second drop jaw USB-A port and two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now, one little nitpick is I'd like to have these two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on opposite sides of each other instead of being on the same side of this convertible laptop. The other thing is I'd like to have HDMI. I understand this is a very thin and light ultra portable, so space is at a premium, but it would have been nice to have it nonetheless. Now, HP made it really easy to get inside this laptop. No longer do you have to remove any rubber strips to get to any hidden screws. All you need to do is remove the four T5 Torx screws, and that's it. Use a guitar pick or a pry tool and pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. I like how easy that is. And as far as user upgradability is concerned, it comes as no surprise that the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM and it is running in dual channel mode. Now, it seems to me that 16 might be the maximum you can go as I didn't see on HP's website an option to go to 32, which would be a little bit unfortunate. But again, I'll look into that and report my findings or whatever HP tells me. But as far as this unit, again, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, that is user upgradable. My review unit has one terabyte of SSD storage. And as you can see from these reads and writes, excellent speeds indicating that this is a Gen 4 SSD, something we like to see here in 2022. Good job on that front. 
Now, when it comes to wireless, this is running Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. No issues on either the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. And one thing to note, that is slotted in so you can upgrade it yourself down the road. That's always a nice option to have. It's not soldered into the motherboard. That's good to see as well. Now, when it comes to the display, there are actually three options you can go with. A Full HD Plus option, that's IPS 1920 by 1200, multi-touch display that can get as bright as 400 nits. Then the mid-tier one would be the one with a 2560 by 1600 resolution that also can get as bright as 400 nits. And then there's an OLED option. That's the one I have. It's a 2.8K option, 2880 by 1800, and that is a low blue light filter. It also is at high dynamic range in terms of a HDR content, that's going to be great. And it also has a brightness and standard definition of 400 nits. So that's the one that HP sent over. That's the top of the line display. And I love the move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. You'll see a little bit more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. That's a big improvement over the 16 to 9 display you got last year. Now, something to keep in mind with a 16 to 10 display, you're going to get slight bars on the top and the bottom when you're consuming media that was optimized for a 16 to nine aspect ratio. So that's just something to be aware of. And as with any OLED display, you're gonna get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors that just pop off the display, the really high contrast, it's all there. That's why I love an OLED display, it just looks fantastic. And the fact that this is an HDR display, watching high dynamic range content on this OLED display has been simply superb. I'm absolutely loving this for consuming media. And it has excellent coverage of the color gamut. So this is gonna be great for the content creator as well as having really good color accuracy. So if you're gonna do Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, color grading, this panel will not disappoint. It is excellent for those tasks. Now, a couple of notes about the display. There's no 4K plus option. This is as high as it's gonna go, the 2880 by 1800, that's 2.8K. There's no high refresh rate other than the 60 Hertz. You don't get 120, you don't get 90. That's something to be aware of. That would have been nice, especially if you're doing gaming or something like that. But for content creation or you're doing things like that, 60 Hertz will certainly suffice and it will give you better battery life. And it's also a glossy display and you'll notice the glare and reflections. It'll depend on your lighting conditions, something to be aware of. But my overall takeaway is this 2.8K OLED display is simply superb. And if you have the money, I would go with this option. But there is one caveat, of course, and that means the OLED display will use more power and take up more battery life. You'll do better on the IPS versions if you're looking for more longevity. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can't quite open it with one finger. That has really tight hinges, by the way, a big improvement over the last generation. You don't get a lot of screen wobble either. That's, again, a big improvement. We'd like to see that. And, of course, this being a two-in-one convertible means you could put this into the different modes. You get the tent mode, which is great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. The same could be said of the stand mode. That's great for presentations and so forth. I actually really like that mode. And then, of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. Great for use with the pen. And speaking of the pen, HP also includes the HP Tilt Pen, which charges via USB-C and stores magnetically to the side, as you see here. And the pen is great for taking notes, sketching out diagrams, sketching out artwork. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Again, note takers, digital artists will gravitate towards the pen. I thought it worked really well. And I also love using the pen in tablet mode. Great for navigating through the OS with that pen. Really worked well. So this is a much improved camera over last year's model. This now is a five megapixel camera. It's got the glam cam features, the auto framing, the auto correction, the auto lighting. It's got all the bells and whistles that we've been seeing here in 2022. HP's done a great job in terms of these cameras. It's now an IR camera that allows you to log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. There is no longer a fingerprint scanner located on the keyboard. That's gone. So now you'll have to rely on the IR camera. And again, it's working well. Setup was easy. 
Now, there's a dedicated key on the keyboard that allows you to turn off the webcam for more security and privacy. So that's always good. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about the video quality and what do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? And for those wondering, this is the difference year over year in terms of the webcam. The one on the left is a 720p webcam and it's not IR. The one on the right is the 2022 webcam, five megapixels, and it is IR. So big difference. Now, I'm a big fan of the Envy keyboards. I liked it on the 15-inch version. I love it here on the 13-inch version. I like the tactility. The key travels excellent. And I also love the fact that the keys light up really nicely here. Easy to see the differentiation and the contrast between the backlight and the keys, especially with this blue model here. I'm not sure about the silver, but with this blue model, you have no trouble identifying the keys. So the backlight's working well, and it's great for typing out long emails, long documents, very comfortable. Your fingers never feel like you're going to bottom out there. So that's been very good. The touchpad is also pretty spacious for a 13 inch convertible. Two finger scrolling was very responsive and all the gestures work as you'd expect. So good job on that front as well. All right, let's talk battery life and the HP NVX 360 13 inch sports a four cell 66 watt hour battery. And considering this as a 2.8K OLED display, this did really well on the battery test, probably the best result I've seen this year as far as an OLED display is concerned. And this did over 13 and a half hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere between nine to 10 hours depending on what you're doing in terms of real world mixed usage so remember everybody's use case is a little bit different so your mileage may vary but my overall takeaway is the battery life is excellent considering this as a 2.8k oled display now if you go with the ips offerings in terms of the display you'll do even better in terms of battery life that's even better and if you need to charge, it takes a little bit over an hour and a half to give you a full charge with the supplied 65 watt USB-C power adapter. Okay, let's talk performance. And this sports a 12th gen Intel processor. It's the Core i7-1250U, a 10 core processor from Intel. That's eight efficiency cores and two performance cores. And as you can see from these numbers, year over year, a nice increase over the 11th gen from last year. Now this also sports integrated Iris Xe graphics. And I've gone over this before. I think they're getting a little bit long in the tooth. And you could do some 1080p video editing. I wouldn't do 4K video editing with integrated iris xe graphics and you can play some games if you lower the settings i've shown it a number of times here on the channel you'll get playable frame rates but of course you could always add an external gpu thanks to the two thunderbolt 4 ports that this has and where you're seeing the biggest improvement is in the multi-core performance over last year's model. And that's going to give you the really good performance here, especially on the Cinebench R23, which tests for any kind of thermal throttling and a heavy sustained workload. It did well in that regard. And for those wondering what the difference is with the 2021 model that is running the 11th gen processor, well, this is the difference here. And as you can see year over year, a big improvement in both the single core and multi-core performance when it comes to the CPU, and even an improvement when it comes to these integrated Iris Xe graphics, definitely showing the improvements in 2022, that's for sure. And when it comes to the audio, this has bottom firing speakers. They're tuned by Bang & Olufsen. Decent volume, good mids, good bass. I would say this is a pretty good sound filling up a room rather nicely for an ultra portable convertible laptop. We don't normally see that. So good job on that regard. Now to give an example of the speakers, let's listen to Epidemic Sound. And if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. Okay, people, let's bring it on home. What do I think about the HP NVX 360 convertible 13-inch laptop here for 2022? Big changes across the board. I like the move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio and the offering of a stunning 13.3 inch 2.8K OLED display. You got a thin and light chassis, a very sleek design, very versatile design, of course. Good port selection here, excellent battery life, including this OLED option that I was a little bit surprised with that how good the battery 
battery was really good. IPS, expect even more battery. That's great. Durable, rock solid design, as I mentioned. PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. The speeds were very good. Full HD webcam is a nice improvement over last year. 1080p video, that's been great. The microphone sound great. HP's done a really good job with their microphones and, and cameras here in 2022. And I like the good audio coming out of the speakers. Now the negatives, of course, you get soldered RAM and the blue color, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, is also a major fingerprint magnet. You will be wiping it down quite a bit. But I think HP's hit a home run here with big changes pretty much across the board. That's why I'm going to give it my editor's choice for the 13-inch convertible laptop category here for 2022, making it worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the NVX360? This gorgeous blue, by the way, I'm really liking it, but one thing to be aware of, it is a major fingerprint magnet. You probably notice it here on the video. Uh, really thin and light, nice all metal design, very premium, very high end, nice port selection on this, no complaints on that front. Uh, really great display here, 2.8K OLED display, 13.3 inches, it's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 2880 by 1800. Uh, all all the hallmarks of the OLED display are here, the deep blacks, the vibrant colors, the high contrast, it's all there. Nice that they include the pen with this model. It's the HP rechargeable tilt pen. It charges via USB-C, sticks magnetically to the side, and that's a nice value add right there. For those that want to sketch out diagrams, take some notes, artwork, you know, you get the, the idea. Now, as far as the battery life, something I wasn't expecting on this with an OLED display, over 13 and a half hours on my continuous web surfing test, that's about nine to 10 hours, maybe 11 hours, depending on what you're doing. Uh, on real world mixed usage. So this is something we haven't seen before. Good battery life with an OLED display. So this might hit the perfect combination there. Now, of course, you want even more battery life. I would imagine the IPS offerings, the other two, uh, would really come to play there, would really give you some good results. But very satisfied with this one. And for the price, considering you're getting an OLED display, you're getting the great battery life and the good performance, really double the performance multi-core year over year. Uh, this is a great value. Again, $1,300 all in, and I think it's a nice complete package. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.